Welcome coaches, my name is Urban Meyer. I'm the wide receiver coach at Notre Dame. This drill tape we're doing today is basically, we're gonna go through the four basic fundamentals of developing a complete receiver. First, we're gonna start off with the footwork. Second, we're gonna go to ball drills and ball security. Third, we're gonna go through releases. And finally, we're gonna go through the blocking progression. Okay, the first phase we're gonna to discuss today is the basic footwork of the receiver. From there, we'll go to ball drills and ball security, releases, then finally blocking. First in footwork, what we're gonna do is try to make the receiver as efficient as, pos efficient as possible and, and have them not have any wasted movement. Every drill set up during this phase of the developing the complete receiver is used, once again, to make the receiver as efficient as possible and eliminate waste of movement. From there, we'll go to ball drills and ball security, the most fundamental drill of being a receiver, the most fundamental skill. What we'll do there is teach receivers how to be uh, hand catchers, catch the ball away from the body, work on uh, the run after the catch, and finally ball security. From there, we'll go releases. Nowadays, since the evolution of pressure defenses and bump man-to-man -man coverage, uh, this has become one of the more important phases of the complete receiver, and finally, we're gonna work on blocking. We're gonna teach you progression and then several drills that we do to develop the receiver to be an efficient blocker. Okay, the first phase of footwork we're gonna talk about is the basic stance. We teach two types of stances here at Notre Dame and the first is against a soft corner and the second is against a press corner. The first one we're gonna take, Malcolm Johnson here, he's gonna get down in a sprinter stance as if he's coming out of the blocks to run a 100-yard dash. What we teach our receivers is this. He wants to be down as if he's coming out of the blocks, raise his butt as high as he can get. His back heel should only be about two inches off the ground. Once he's in a position, lower that a little bit. Once he's in that position, we want him to raise 12 inches, bring his, tress, his chest 12 inches off his thigh, get his he head up a little bit, and get his arms in something we call a running ready position. All we're trying to do in the stance is eliminate any, eliminate any wasted movement, have him comfortable and be able to explode out of his stance and get moving. Okay, the second stance we teach is against bump and run man coverage. So as Malcolm gets in his sprinter stance against the soft corner, go ahead and raise up Malcolm. Now as he sees bump and run and the guy comes to the line of scrimmage and attacks bump and run, we're gonna ask him to balance up his stance and bring his hands up in a ready position to get his hands to avoid any possible jam by the defensive back. So once again, a quick review of the first stance we're teaching is uh, against a soft corner. Malcolm is in a sprinter stance, his hands in a running ready, and the whole purpose of the stance is to waste any, eliminate any wasted movement. The second stance we're gonna teach is to have Malcolm balance up a little bit. Now it's more of a basketball stance where he can go each way against bump and run coverage. Okay, from here we're gonna go to the start of Malcolm getting into his first stance against a soft corner. Okay, we're gonna have Malcolm put all his weight on that front foot. When the ball is snapped, we want to have exaggerated arm movement, have him explode, stay low. The reason we are so low in his stance is a, a receiver has a tendency, if you raise too high on the snap, you sink down, then you go. If you're too low, then you raise up to get going. So we want to have the happy medium there so there is wa uh, zero wasted movement. When the ball is snapped, at Notre Dame, we have our receivers watch the football. When the ball is snapped, we're going to push off the front foot, roll over the front foot, Exaggerate the arm movement and explode for five yards, which we're gonna do right now. Okay, once again, this is against the soft corner. This is our first stance. We call it the sprinter stance. All we're gonna do is I'm gonna say set hit, move the ball, and he's gonna take off for five yards, turn around and come back one time. We have an inside foot up. And remember, the back heel should only be about two inches off the ground. All right, here we go. Set hit. The second type of stance and start we're going to discuss is against a bump and run or press corner. Later on in the, in the drill tape, we'll discuss the actual release techniques we use here. But what I want to do is just go through the fundamental stance and start that we teach here uh, against bump and run press coverage. So first of all, Malcolm, get back in your sprinter stance against a soft corner. And you can notice as during the course of a ball game, when the defensive back comes up in a bump alignment, your receiver's allowed to move. All he's got to do is be set one second before the ball snap. As the corner comes up and gets in a press alignment, we're going to ask him to balance up, get your hands up. Notice his hands are up, so once the defensive back wants to get his hands on you, you're in a hand-to-hand -hand combat mode and you're able to get his hands off you. Okay, we also teach a triple move, and all we're going to do for a start is going to teach in-out-in or out-in-out. 
and all we're going to do is come down here five yards and come back the other way. The first one will be, first of all, balance up. You got bump and run. You're predetermined. You have to take an inside release. So it's going to be inside step, out, then back in. And once again, in the later part of the tape and releases, we'll get into more detail. So here we go once again on ball movement. You got inside press, and we're going inside release, in, out, in. Set, hit, just five yards. We're going to turn back and come back the other way. <clears throat> Now we're going to go out and out. Ball's inside. He's going to step out, punch in, and go back outside. Once again, this is all teaching you the stance against a bump and run corner. Out and out. Sit. Move. Good. Okay, the next part of the footwork progression are the actual breaking points we teach here. First of all, we're going to start with uh, weave. Weave is, is used on routes where we ask you to change direction without losing speed. For example, a post, a post corner, a dig, those type of routes, a slant. What we teach there is the punch is one of the most important parts of the weave as far as change of direction. The punch is the actual plant foot hit on the ground. The second part we'll talk about and discuss, and you can see Malcolm do is here's the actual kick out. What we're trying to do in the weave is, a way, is eliminate the rounded cuts. So for example, if I'm a receiver and I want to run a post, I'm coming over this way, this would be my plant leg or punch. This would be my kick leg. I want to kick in a direction of the route where I want to end up. For example, if I don't kick, I'll plant here and I'll start rolling it over and it takes me four or five steps to get to where I would be if I do a good punch and kick to get in the direction I'm going. Once again, this technique or breaking point is used on a post, a post corner, a dig or square in or a slant. And what it is, it's a change of direction without losing speed. So there's two drills we use. First is the tight weave. All we're going to do is ask Malcolm to get here in his stance, and we're going to go from this hash to the far hash. So what we're going to do is ask him to just run, basically straddle the yard line, and he's going to learn to every third step slam his foot. And all that does is I want to give him a little head and shoulder, and it, we're, the whole goal of the weave, breaking point, or plant drive, and speed turn is we want to get the defensive back out of his comfort zone so he can't plant and drive on the football. Okay, the first part we're going to do is the tight weave. All we're going to do is have Malcolm push three steps. He's going to push with his inside foot, having a good stance <clears throat> that he had before that we taught. And every third step, we're going to plant and give a good head and shoulder all the way coming to the far half. She'll come back doing the same thing. Then we'll repeat it doing a loose weave. The loose weave is more characteristic of an actual post or post corner where we're actually coming off the line and getting the defensive back to move. This we're just teaching the punch. All right, here we go. Set, move. Just. Every third step, slam the foot. Okay, he's going to turn around, come right back. Notice the head and shoulder, and we actually, I want to hear him make noise. When that foot hits the ground, that's part. We want to have the defensive back as he's backpedaling. When Malcolm slams that foot in the turf, we want the defensive back to have to rotate his hips or change direction, expecting a guy to make a move. So that's what we have coming back here. All right, set, go. Every third step, bam, bam, bam. Okay, from here, we're going to go with the loose sweep. And the loose weave is actual, there, there's something, there, there's several reasons why we use this. First, we want the, this is a good warm-up drill during pre-practice or the first part of practice to get the knee, knees and ankles loose and have the receiver just get loosened up, getting ready for practice. The other is teaching them the head and shoulder with a punch, and then most importantly, what you do with the dead leg or the leg that's not planted on the ground. We're going to ask Malcolm to go one, two, three, coming off at a 45-degree angle. So it's going to be one, two, and he's going to slam the outside foot and kick in the opposite direction at a 45 degree angle. Okay, and he's gonna go back and forth, change the direction, get into the far hash. All right, here we go, loose weave. Loose weave, he's gonna step and head in this direction right here. All right, here we go, set, go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Great job, that's good. Coming back, watch closely his kick leg or his dead leg, the leg not in the turf. And imagine if running a post corner if he rounded it, the, the amount of time he's changing here with a good kick out. All right, here we go. Plant and kick. Headed to your right, Malcolm. Set, go. Two, three, two, three, two, three. Good. Okay, that's a tight weave and that's a loose weave. That's the first breaking point we teach here is the, uh, the weave on, and once again, just to review with you, that's on post corners, posts, slants, and digs. From there, we're going to come over here and do the plant and drive. This is the breaking point we teach on routes such as the curl, such as the comeback, such as the hitch. That's when you're asking the receiver to go full speed 
and actually plant and stop, come to a complete stop and work back to the football. Okay, this is probably arguably the most uh, that separates the great receivers from just the average receiver. The ability to separate from the defensive back going full speed, stopping on a dime and kicking out. Same principles that were taught in the weave we're teaching here in the plant drive. There's going to be a plant leg and a dead leg. The dead leg is the one without the weight on the, on the ground. So we're going to ask him to just jog into the last part of the cone. Start at this cone. As you approach the first cone, we want to accelerate or burst. We call burst into the route. We want to accelerate the arm action, drop our chest on our thigh, and get in a position, a plant position, where we're all the weights on the front foot or outside foot. This is your dead leg, and we're going to kick it out in the opposite direction or at a 90 degree direction where you're going to plant and drive and work back to the football. Okay, once again, here's what the drill is going to be about. It's called plant and drive. We're going to jog from this cone to this cone. Once you get about two yards from the cone, we want to accelerate the arm action, get in the hit position or plant and drive position, throw the arm out of the way, get the head and shoulders headed back to the quarterback, and you're basically running the top end of a curl. Once again, raise up, accelerate, burst into the next cone, accelerate to the next cone, and go all the way through. At the end, you'll catch a ball and put it away. We're going to start this way, go all the way down, and then come right back. All right, here we go. Okay, this is just about three, four speed. Once again, jog between the cones, get in the plant position, then kick out and separate. Kick out and separate. This is a simulation of the top end of a curl. All right, here we go. Set, go. Just three, four speed. Accelerate out. Slow down. Slow down. Burst. Good. Arm action, arm action. Kick out. Just finish. Good. Now we'll come back. Throw me that ball, Malcolm. We'll finish with the ball in the last one. Okay, simulation of a curl. Once again, the important coaching points are, come on out here, Malcolm. I'm going to have them get in a plant position for you one time so you know exactly what we're talking about. We want all the weight on the front foot. We want this. When we plant, we're going to kick this leg and then stop in the opposite direction. The important coaching points are when he plants, you want to throw that elbow to get the head and shoulders around. So on a curl, if the ball is thrown on time, you want to be able to have your head and, around, head and shoulders around first. The second part we're teaching is we want him to gather in a short area between the cones then burst into it and then kick out as hard as you can. From here to here are the most important part of this drill. All right, here we go. The plant and drive. A lot of people call it the M drill, plant and drive drill. Here we go, set, go. Burst, burst out, kick out, kick out, kick out, stay down, kick out, kick out, get your head around and catch a ball. All right, finally, the third breaking point we teach here at Notre Dame is the speed turn. We'll start right here. Okay, just to review with you, we've gone through the weave, we've gone through the plant and drive. The speed turn is used on routes. The only route we have right now in the offense is a speed out, a 12, a 12 yard rollover out where we ask the receiver not to, never to slow down, actually accelerate to the sideline as he's coming out of his break. All we teach is this. We're gonna ask the receiver in this drill, balls inside here, we're running a speed turn this way. We wanna cross or go past the first cone before we allow him to even start to sink his hips. Okay, once he gets this cone, we're gonna sink our hips and then roll over our outside foot. Ball's inside here, roll over out, outside foot and accelerate to the sideline and I'll throw the football to him. Okay, the secrets here is we wanna sell like we're running a streak for the first five yards. For the last two yards, we wanna drop our hips and accelerate to the sideline, gaining separation from the defensive back, okay? Once again, ball's inside here. This is the top end of a speed out, the third and final breaking point we teach. Okay, set, go. Drop your hips, accelerate to the sideline. Okay, now we're gonna run to our left. Ball's inside here. This is a speed out to the field. Drop your hips. We're gonna roll over our outside foot, drop our hips, and accelerate, gaining depth and speed as you get to the sideline. Here we go, set, go. Drop your hips, accelerate to the sideline. Okay, the next phase in the footwork progression will be the sideline or toe touching drill, which a lot of people call it. And what we teach here is we're gonna teach our receivers as they get close to the sideline, we want him to start pounding his feet to make sure he knows where he's at so he doesn't just run out of bounds. The second thing we teach is once again, obviously concentrate on the football and we wanna take our, our dead leg or leg not on the ground and drive it up to our chest and then roll actually over the toes and drag the down foot to give the appearance, even if you're not in bounds, to give the appearance you are in bounds by dragging the foot. And a lot of times officials will see that foot dragging or dirt kicking up and knows he'll be down. 
Okay, so once again, we're here, what we teach in Notre Dame, as you come across our pounding your feet, gathering control so you don't run out of bounds on the play, on the uh, route, for example, an out cut where it's determined, where we don't want you, the ball is late being thrown, we don't want you to just run out of bounds, gather, get your feet underneath you, catch the ball, drive the dead leg up in the air and roll over the down foot. Okay, well, Malcolm will do this two or three times. Then we're gonna come back and do a drill. We'll finish our footwork session with four, it's a four corner drill. And what it basically does, it takes every phase of our uh, breaking points we just went through and it finishes up with a toe touching drill. So it's an all purpose drill that you can finish up. We do on a day to day base, basis. All right, here we go. First, we're gonna start off with our sideline or toe touching drill. All he's gonna do is just about three, four speed, do a three or four yard rollover out. As he gets close to sideline, we want him to pound his feet, gather control, concentrate, catch the ball, and dra uh, drag the down leg and kick the uh, dead leg up and roll over the down leg or down foot. All right, here we go. Set, go. Just jogging, roll over. Good. Notice how he drives the leg without any pressure on it up and rolls over the back leg and, and scrapes the toe. One more time, set, go. Pound your leg as you're getting close out of bounds. Okay, good. All right, now let's finish up with the four corner drill. This is a drill that's going to uh, take the breaking point, the speed turn, and the toe touching drill and put it all together. And it's a good conditioning drill during two days and, and uh, early practice. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to ask him we put four, uh, four cones five yards apart. We're going to take Malcolm, he's going to get a good stance. On commands, he's going to push the first cone. He's going to use a perfect plant and drive technique as if we just learned over there. He's going to come to here, plant and drive again. Now he's going to use a speed turn or a three cut top ends. Speed turn, speed turn. Then I'm standing down there. I will throw the football, have him gather his feet, catch it, then drag, drag the down foot and be efficient on the sideline. Okay, this is a four corner drill. Okay, so the way we teach him was one left, three rights, and finish, and we'll go the other side. All right, notice a good stance, sprinter stance against the soft corner. First one's plant drive, second one's plant drive, speed turn, speed turn, and finish. All right, here we go. Set, go. Speed turn, gather. Good. Okay, now we'll go to the other side. That's good. Okay, now we tell him he's got one right, three left. So he's going to finish where he started once again. Finish where he started. Now he's going to drag over the other foot and keep his down foot and keep scrape it to keep in bounds. All right, one right, three left. Good technique. Set, go. Plant, kick, kick, kick. Chop your feet. Get your weight down. Good. Okay, and the final drill we're gonna do in the jug machine will be something we call the squeeze drill. And all we ask the receiver to do is I'm gonna stand out here with them, we'll shoot the balls at them. We want him to catch the ball and not put it away. We want to give him the feeling of actually, I'm gonna tell him, squeeze the air out of the ball, strengthen your fingertips, and there's no doubt in your mind. Once again, you catch a ball in your chest, there's doubt whether you have the ball or not. Once you catch a ball in your hands, we teach you to squeeze the air out of the ball. That avoids defensive backs from coming in and knocking the ball out of your hands. It also gives the receiver confidence and ability to know that he has that ball and there's nothing the defensive back can do to take it away from him. Okay, we'll start right here with the, uh, with the back and forth. Take a look at Malcolm right here. He's going to, on command, go back and forth, catch the ball, put it away, and read a number. And he's going to go back and forth three, four times. Just send the ball, shoot the ball back here to the uh, manager. Set, go. Notice extension. Concentrate it on the ball. Concentrate on the ball. Spread your fingers. Good. Good, spread your fingers and look it in. Okay, good, from there we're gonna go top end of the route. And the route we're gonna use today, you can pick whatever you're gonna, the base route in your route tree. We'll have Malcolm start on this side. All he's gonna do is go a quick one, two, plant, just like we worked on plant and drive earlier, kick back to the ball, catch it, tuck it away, work up field and read a number back to me so I know he's concentrating on putting that ball away. Okay, this is the top end off the jug machine. Okay, and one more. Okay, from here we're gonna do the walking at the drill. Walking at the jug machine. We're gonna ask Malcolm right here, we're gonna rapid fire. This is just a quickly uh, a way of developing the hands, catching the ball off his body. He's gonna read a number, but this is the one drill off the jug machine. We're gonna ask him not to put the ball away. 
So as I fire balls at them, we want the receiver to step through the ball. We don't want them to stop and catch the ball. As the ball is in flight, we want them to step. As you're, as you're running a dig or a curl, we're working back to the ball, catch the ball, throw it right back to the managers. We're going to rapid fire five or six balls at them so there'll be no way he can put it away. He's going to catch the ball, pop the ball back, catch the ball, pop the ball back, all the way up to as close as you can, get to the jugs. All right, here we go, Malcolm. Walk at the machine. Good. Okay, the final drill we use the jug machine for is we're going to teach the receiver to catch the ball, repeat like we've gone through, is teach the receiver to catch the ball off his body, use his hands. We're going to ask him not to put it away in a tuck position. We're going to ask him to do is spread their fingers as far as they can, cover as much of the ball as they can, squeeze the air out of his term I use all the time, and I'm going to, as a coach, I'm going to try to knock the ball out of his hand and give him the feeling of knowing if he puts both hands on that ball and squeezes the air out, it's hard to have a defensive back come through and knock the ball out after you make the catch. Okay, so we're going to ask Malcolm right here. He'll catch the ball. He'll squeeze it. I'm going to walk in as he's walking to me. I'm going to try to knock the ball out either way. Okay, if he doesn't have control, lose control, I'm going to knock it out of his hands. We don't want that, obviously, to happen. Okay, so walk back and forth. Start on this side. All you're going to do is just walk slowly. When I say now, shoot the ball at him. Catch the ball. Hold it out. And we're going to do that. Just repeat it. Go back and forth one time. All right, here we go. Set, go. Okay, coming back the other way. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. Okay, set, go. Okay, from here we're going to go off to the shoulder drill. Okay, we'll ask Malcolm to come out here to the 20-yard line. This is another ball drill that we use to teach the receivers to shield the defensive back. Benny Gabo is going to be out here with us. And all we're going to do is ask, uh, you don't have to go the first drill, but a defensive back as he's running, with Malcolm, say, on a fade route or streak route, and we're in this position. When the ball is underthrown, we're going to ask Malcolm to do everything he can to catch that ball high and away over the left shoulder or opposite shoulder where he would like to catch it. Normally, on an underthrown ball, the receiver with tendency would be to do this. And if he looked back to the ball and catch it like this, the negative of that is the defensive back who's with him as he's going. If he turns and catches in a normal situation, that's where the ball gets knocked away. Okay? We're going to ask Malcolm, wherever this ball is thrown, to slow down and catch it over your left shoulder is high, eye level or higher, and away from the defensive back, using rebounding principles and shielding the defender away from the ball. Okay, so if we're just walking on the defensive back, the ball's under throw, Malcolm will slow down, and he'll catch the ball high and away over the left shoulder. There's only two things that can happen, okay? First of all, the defensive back can go through, and it'll be a pass interference call. The second thing, he won't be able to get to the ball, and we'll make the reception. Okay, so just jogging about three, four speed, three, four speed, what we're going to do is drop it over our left shoulder, no matter where the ball is, catch it high and away over the left shoulder. Another good warm-up drill in pre-practice. Coming the other way, Malcolm. Very good. Okay, one more time. Set, go. Catch it high and away over the left shoulder. Slow down if you have to. Very good. And last one right here. Set, go. Very good. Now, from there, the final of all the ball drills we'll do with you today are going to be Benny Gabo and Malcolm Johnson. This just teaches the receiver to be aggressive and go up and over the top of the defensive back who has them pretty well covered. Okay? So, for example, we're going to go about 3-4 speed. And Malcolm's going to be the receiver. I'll be the defensive back. Set, go. We'll be going like this. As a coach, I'm going to throw that ball right at the defensive back's right ear. And that'll force the uh, Malcolm to go up and over, take the ball away from the defensive back and secure it and make the great play. Okay, coming back over here. Once again, we're going to the 3-4 speed. You move out this way, two steps. At 3-4 speed, and I'm going to throw it right at his inside ear, and Malcolm will go over, make the play, and pull it away. Okay, we'll do this up and back about three times. 3-4 speed, set, go. Good. Okay, coming back. Now he's going to go back over the top, make the play on the other side. Set, go. Go up and over. Good. Good. Okay, the final part we'll add to this drill. I'll ask Benny here, and he's going to take his right arm. He's going to stick it up. Okay, set, go. He's going to do this. All he's going to do is try to shield the vision of the receiver, and now force the, guy to, force the receiver to be aggressive and go over the top and make the play to catch the ball. So you're going to raise your left arm here. Left arm. 
All right, here we go. Set, go. Malcolm's got to get through the distraction and make the play. Now you're going to raise your right arm, Benny, and attack. And I'll make this R one. He's going right at his right ear. Set, go. Left ear. That's a nice job. Okay, the next phase of our balls, drills, and ball security part of the tape will be we're going to take our receiver and take them through the four basic top ends of our routes. And this is to give the receiver their comp confidence and comfort of coming out of the route full speed and having the ball on them fairly quickly. We're going to first take the curl. We're going to then do a speed out. Then we're going to do a, a square in our dig and then the post corner. And all we're going to do is ask the receiver to do the top last seven yards or six or seven yards of the route, turn around, catch the ball, get used to coming out of the break, getting his head and shoulders around, catch the ball, pop it away, give me a number call, and then accelerate upfield after it. Okay? So we're going to start off first of all with a curl. This is called the top ends of the routes. Coming out in this direction, ball's here on the inside, getting a good sprinter stance. All he's going to do is come out of his break at the top end of a curl, catch the ball, read me a number, we'll come back doing a uh, speed out. We'll go again doing this dig, and then we'll finish with a post corner route coming back at the camera. Okay, first one's the top end of a curl. Set, break. Catch the ball, put it away, and get upfield. Okay, from there, we're going to go top end of a speed out. That's good right there, Malcolm. Top end of the speed out. Once again, this all, all we're doing is carrying over what we learned in footwork, and we're adding the ball drills and ball security to it. Okay, the speed out, just the top end, six or seven, last six or seven yards. We're going to drop our hips, accelerate the sideline, catch the ball, and put it away. Set, break. All right, next drill, next uh, route we're going to use is going to be the squaring or dig route. Top end of the dig, and that's going to be off the weave action now. We're going to go about three or four yards, plant our outside foot, kick to the post, and come across the top end of the route and having the ball on him fairly quickly. Okay, feeling comfortable coming out of his routes. Top end of a dig. Set, go. And the final route we're going to do, or final top end, will be the uh, seven or post corner route. Back up five. Once again, to get him comfortable catching the ball coming out of the top end of the route. This will be the post corner, which we'll learn in the second tape, the exact techniques we teach. We're going to go one, two steps, plant his outside foot, go three hard to the post, then accelerate out using the weave technique and drop the ball over his opposite shoulder. Okay, once again, a good ball drill, just get him comfortable coming out of their breaks. All right, post corner. Set, go. Right foot, left foot. All righty, from there, we're going to take, we're going to go through a collision drill. This really teaches them ball security. Now, I just want to talk about that briefly. So many times, this is the phase that gets overlooked by the receivers. Running backs and quarterbacks obviously take a lot of time to work on this. We here, we take a lot of time and teach the receivers how to hold on to the football. The thing we're going to ask them to do as fast as possible, catch the ball. Cover the point with their middle finger. Slam the ball. We all say high and tight. We want it to be as uncomfortable as they can up on the high on the rib cage. Squeeze it with your forearm. And then we're going to say something we call an elbow lock. Okay, so we have the receiver holding the ball like this. I'm going to ask him to lock down on it so there's no way they can get the ball out. The most common, whenever you see a ball on the ground or a fumble by a wide receiver, is where you see a receiver not being secure or as they get ready for contact. We see him bring the ball like this and start to cover it. All that does is expose a lot of the football, and there's a chance that thing's squirting out of us. So we're going to ask Malcolm here. He's going to catch the ball. First of all, he's going to show me proper ball security. Catch the ball, pop it away, bring the elbow lock. You're high and tight, and then as you're getting ready for collision, we tell you to drop your pads, take the meat hand or dead hand, cover the top, and that's our proper ball security as you're getting ready for contact. Okay, Malcolm demonstrated for us one time. He's going to catch the ball, put it high and tight, Elbow lock did a great job. As contact approaches, he's going to take the meat hand and just throw it up over the top and drop his pads and get ready for contact. Okay? This is what we're going to learn right now. All right, we're going to start Malcolm right here. He's going to run the top end of whatever route you choose. For uh, ease purposes, we're going to use the top end of a curl. All right, on the top end of the curl, we're going to tie the weave in, the plant drive. He's going to catch the ball. Our two managers here are going to take a full swing at him, catch the ball. He's going to, we want him to drop his pads take the meat hand, cover the ball, take a full shot. Teach your receiver to take a hit with, the, with your face up. Never duck your head. Drop your pads, and then right after contact, as fast as you can, rip up field and get the extra yardage. Okay, we'll go through this two times. 
All right, top end of the curl with collision, we call this. Set, go. Very good. A little forward swing, a little more of a swing on. Move this way one step. So you can take a full swing out. Nice job, Malcolm, coming back one more time. We want him to make sure we keep his head up. We never want to see a receiver duck his head like this. He can take it, get him used to getting hit with the bags, obviously, and then concentrate on catching the ball and putting it away. All right? Good distraction, Joe. If they're thinking about the blue pads, they're not going to be thinking about catching the ball. Set, go. Full swing here. Boom. Boom. Good. All right, from there we'll go top end of a dig. Same exact principle. Same exact principle. You guys will be right over here. One guy standing here. One guy right here. All right, top end of the dig, same exact principle. Now we're going to use a good weave technique. Plant your outside leg, weave to the next cone, plant, and then kick out, catch the ball, work on uh, your concentration, putting the ball away, and then covering the, meat, covering the ball with your meat hand and ripping up field after the catch. Okay, one step this way. He's going to be run down the side of the cones. All right, top end of the dig with collision. Top end of the dig with collision. Set, go. Good. Okay, the final phase of our ball drills and ball security is going to be the exact same drill we did, we just finished, and that's going to be the collision with the curl and collision with the dig. We're going to do a collision with the curl. Malcolm's going to go through again, keep a high and tight ball, take the collision, and then he's going to learn to run and make a move on a defensive back after the catch. A very important part of our, our drills when we teach a guy to run after the catch. He's going to catch the ball, work through the cones, take a hit, drop his pads, and on contact, we want him to spin out of the tackle. Spin out of the tackle, but most importantly, when he's spinning out of the tackle, learn to keep the ball still high and tight. A lot of times when the guy's making a move, you'll see a receiver or running back take the ball away from the framework of his body. So we make a big deal about making contact and spinning out, but staying high and tight and good ball security as he's coming through the break. Okay, we're going to do one of each, a curl and a dig. All right, here we go. Full speed, one time each way. All right, here we go. Set, go. Drop his pads. Good. Okay, now we'll come back with a dig. Okay, right over there, Benny, same, same place, a little further back. Okay, you're right over here. He's going to come through right there, back up one yard. All right, top end of a dig or square in with the same thing, collision, and then spin out of collision and keeping a ball. Notice Malcolm did a great job on this next one. Notice how high and tight he keeps that ball, even when he's making the contact and coming out of the spin running after the catch. All right, here we go, last one. Top end of a dig with collision and spin. Set, go. Working. Boom. Catch the ball. Work them. Good. Good. That's good. Okay, the next, uh, the next part of the tape for developing a complete receiver will be releases. Okay, the first one we're going to start off, there's three releases we have to work against, so three types of corners. The first is a soft corner. We simply call that a vertical with speed release. We're coming out of our stance low and hard like we always do, or like we always teach. The second one is going to be against a rolled corner, a cover two, jam corner, where his job is to funnel or redirect the receiver. Our third and final will be against bump and run, which as I told you in the beginning of the tape, has taken of greater significance since the pressure defenses and bump and run coverages. We're going to start here now with those three type of releases we use against a roll or cover two corner. Benny's going to be the cloud corner or rolled up corner. And first we're going to work on is stick release. Stick release is something we're going to use on routes, for example, curl. We want, the, we want to widen the throwing lanes. Okay, we want to, we want to sell and stretch the corner and take a, an inside release, get him to widen and work inside. Another way of thinking is the inside receiver, when his job is to clear it out against a cover, uh, against a cover two structure where the guy's not going to let you down the middle of the field. All we're going to do is attack his technique or attack his hand of his technique, have the defender overplay, slip inside and run your route. Okay? We'll start off here with uh, Malcolm's going to be the receiver. Top of the number split. You're going to be back about four yards off. This is a typical cover two look we're going to see. He's going to attack the man's technique or his outside hand. Okay, if we attack his outside hand, this guy's taught not to let him outside. He should start to stretch. We never want to get outside his framework of his body because we still need to get inside and run our curl route, or whichever route you need, uh, dig or whatever you want, where you want to stretch the throwing lanes in a cover two look. So he's going to attack his outside. He's going to get close, pound his feet, and punch that outside uh, leg 
to get the corner to overplay the threat of an outside release. Slip inside, use his hand, and we're going to tie together a low drive and then get your width back to stretch the throwing lanes in a curl. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Okay, this is going to be rolled corner, and we're going to use a stick release. Attack his technique or attack his outside hand. All right, here we go. All right. All right, here we go. Set, go. Attack his outside. Punch. Get inside. Good. Okay, nice job. The next release we're going to use is called a best release. The only time we ever use a best release is when we're running a streak, and we're trying to stretch the defense, and we're trying to get 44 yards downfield as fast as we can. <coughs> Excuse me. The best way to do this, our split will be the top of the numbers. Our aiming point is going to be four yards outside the rolled corner. If he's four yards outside the rolled corner, his, his rule or his objective is not to let him have a clean release and most importantly, never outside release because that safety is in a bind now because he's on the hash. So we're going to aim four yards outside. Then we're going to read this outside shoulder of the defensive back. If he has something we call a, a, hard, a hard corner where he tries to overplay and not let you outside, we're going to slip inside and get you with back and take off down the field, okay? If he has something we call a soft shoulder, that means he's lazy on his technique and he's not really concerned about the jam, we're gonna call it a soft shoulder where he's coming over here and he's giving you that soft shoulder, we're gonna take that because once again, our objective is to be 30 to 40 yards down the field away from that safety near the hash. Okay, one other rule. When it is a best release and you have a hard shoulder, and what I mean, that guy's not gonna let you outside, you can never redirect inside the numbers. Okay, because once again, our objective is stay away from that safety on the hash and you have a chance of catching the ball over here near the sideline. Okay, all right, here we go. Well, first one we're going to be is a soft shoulder. Okay, Benny, you got a soft shoulder. The guy's not quite as aggressive on his technique and a little bit lazy. And we're going to read the shoulder. He's going to aim, once again, this is critical, four yards outside to make that guy react. If you aim four yards outside, a lot of times that guy's got to cross over like this to stop you. Then you can slip inside and get your depth. All right, there you go, soft corner. Best release, best release against a rolled corner, soft shoulder. Here we go, set, go. Go ahead, take it. And you got it. Okay, hustle back, Malcolm. Okay, the next part we're going to do is the hard shoulder, where now the receiver aims four yards outside, and we get the uh, defensive back even to cross over and really be over aggressive and not let him outside. We're going to slip back inside and get your depth downfield. You'll notice he'll be very similar, if not the same exact spot as if he was, if he went outside release, if he gets his width back. Okay, here we go, just to review with you. The only time we use this best release is when we're trying to get a streak and get the receiver downfield and stretch the defense as fast as possible. All right, here we go. Now you got a hard shoulder bending. You're gonna once again aim four yards outside, pop inside, and get your width running down the field. All right, here we go. Set, go, and aim outside, boom, slip inside. Now you notice he was in a very similar spot as he was before when he got the soft shoulder. Okay, that's the best release. Okay, hustle back, Malcolm. Next release we're going to use today is going to be the, uh, is going to be, we got the, we went through the stick release, we went through the best nine, and now we're going to do something we call a low drive. Those are on routes where it's predetermined you need to go inside or outside. And all we're trying to do is here deliver the punishment as opposed to taking the punishment and be aggressive. So, for example, we got Malcolm split on top of the numbers. Our rule, we have to go outside any rolled corner. So Benny is once again our rolled corner. He's going to play good technique on this. All Malcolm's going to do is invite the collision, invite the collision, and rip through an outside release. Rip through an outside release. All right, here we go. You're going to get your pads down and rip as low as you can. And rip high to low. Low to high, excuse me, low to high. All right, this is a low drive. Once again, used on releases or routes where it's predetermined you need to go outside release. Okay. Low drive release. Set, go. Good. Okay, releases against a bump and run or press corner is something I told you about is taking greater priority with the evolution of pressure defenses and bump and run man coverage. Okay, we're going to have Malcolm, as I told you in our stances, we're going to balance up. Benny here is going to play an inside half or inside press on the man. Every release we use involves a triple move with your footwork. And I'm going to go through our footwork quickly, and I'm going to go through and spend some time on our hand placement and a unique release we use here at Notre Dame. Okay, when we use a, a triple move, uh, defensive backs have a tendency and are taught instinctively 
to react to the receiver's second move. So when I say a triple move, it's going to be, I'm going to just put that foot down. If I'm going inside release, just an inside move, hard punch the outside, then coming back inside. And our thought process is here. If I'm in a good stance, get my hands up. If I attack and just put that foot down, he's going to sit and get ready to react to my next move. My next move, I want him, I want to hard punch the outside. I'm trying to lock him up as I have done here, lock his hips up. The only way he can stop me from going back inside is by bringing that hand up and trying to stop me. This is where the hands come involved. And we're going to teach, it's called a grab and pull, okay? First thing I'm going to do is try to chop and get that hand off me. I'm doing that for a couple reasons. First, to get his hands off me. Second, if I make a good collision, what I'm doing is I'm exposing some uh, shoulder pad and some jersey, and I'm going to take this left hand, as, a, as pass rushers do on an offensive lineman, I'm going to grab whatever I can, and I'm going to pull myself through on a route, and then close them off with my outside leg, okay? A quick review that I'm going to Malcolm demonstrate it for us. Okay, if I'm going to take an inside release, Good stance, I'm going to bounce up in a basketball position, hands up to avoid any uh, contact. When you, when you, if you start with your hands down, a lot of times you lose on aggressive defensive back where he's up in your cushion right now. Okay, so it's just going to be put my foot down, boom. Second, I want to have, uh, make a hard punch to the outside. He's going to lock up. Then I'm going to come down, I'm going to grab whatever I can. I'm aiming for that back number on his jersey. I tell him to tear that jersey off. You're pulling, and then I'm going to take my outside foot and close him off and then get into my route. Okay, that's called a grab and pull release. Here we go. Okay, this first one's going to be about half speed. We'll come right back and go full speed. All right, here we go. In, out, in, grab and pull. Set, go. Good. Okay, hustle back. Exaggerate. Now, this one's going to be full speed. I want you to grab that jersey. I want you to grab the jersey. Okay, watch as this is the hand. We always tell them this is the hand that chops it. This is the hand that sets you free. Okay, we're going to pull ourselves through. Use the, actually use the defensive back as leverage, pulling us into the route. Okay, here we go. Set, go! Grab him. Okay, good, one more time coming through. We're just gonna walk through the last one. Okay, just walking through. So it's gonna be in, out, back in, slap, grab and pull. Okay, we're just walking now. Okay, here we go. Set, go. Step, step, grab, pull, get into your route. Okay, good, that's grab and pull. Next one we're gonna use Say you have a receiver not quite as tall and you don't have the arm leverage where you can reach out and grab guys. We're going to do the same exact technique, only now we're going to do instead of grab and pull where you're exposing yourself and if you don't have the long arms, it's a little harder to get done. We're going to go in, out, in, hand comes up to stop me. All we're going to do is chop, double chop, get my arms off me and get me into the route. This is used once again with receivers that don't have the same kind of wingspan or arm length like a Malcolm does. All right, here we go. In, out, in, slap, chop. Set, go. Good. Okay, one more time. Okay, let's go full speed. Don't quite overextend as much. Make a little bit harder on them. All right, here we go. This is in, out, in, slap, chop. Set, go. Good. All right. Next one against bump and run, we're going to use something called we use on slants, where we want to self-fade. And the Green Bay Packers do this as good as anybody. Where we're just taking off, making, making the defensive back, give the appearance we're running a fade or takeoff right now. We want to get the defensive back to cross over and get in this kind of uh, situation or relationship with you. And we're going to use the same grab and pull technique, and we're going to add a slap to it. So Benny gets up on me inside, press, set, go. I'm just going to turn and take off. I'm going to get in. Once he gets to cross over, bring that leg up. I'm going to try to club him, grab anything I can, and then come inside and run in the slant. The secret here is get a good three steps to the fade to get him to turn and run. We want to have him in his crossover position as he can't recover as he come back and underneath. Okay, this is self-fade, grab and pull, and we use it on a slant route. All right, here we go. Notice the good stance. Balance stance, hands up tight. This is self-fade, grab and pull. This will be three, four speed. Set, go. One, two, three, boom. Good. Okay, one more time. Let's go full speed. One time. Self-fade, grab and pull. All right, set, go. All right, next type of release against bump and run are used on routes where we do not want the defensive back between ourselves and the quarterback. So we call it lazy releases or the same release you would use if you're a poor releaser. So Benny's inside press and I'm running a curl route. I don't want to have him in this kind of position. I don't want to have him in the throwing lane of a curl route. So we're going to use it two different ones, lazy with leverage and lazy with the throw by. First of all, lazy with leverage. I'm going to forget all that good footwork, the triple, because we want to have him on our upfield shoulder. So it's going to be, I'm in this position, set, go. I'm just taking off. I'm going to get him riding my upfield shoulder. When I get to the top end, I'm going to leverage into him 
and then work back to the ball and have a, an unobstructed throwing lane for the quarterback. Okay? The second one we're going to do is lazy with the throw by. Now, the defensive back is too far inside. I can't use it lazy inside leverage like I just showed you. So I'm going to take a lazy outside. Set, go. He's going to be running with me because I did a poor job with my footwork. I just took off. He's going to be running with my upfield shoulder. Once I hit my depth, I'm going to do something real fast and use a throw by technique. And once again, give that quarterback an unobstructed uh, flight line to throw the football. OK, first one. You're running a curl, OK? He's giving you. He's, he's on the inside half. There's still plenty of time you can run or plenty of room you can run an inside release and leverage back to the ball. Go full 10 yards. In, this is a lazy with leverage release against bump and run. Okay, let's go three, four speed. Set, go. Just lean back, boom. Okay, good. Okay, now we're gonna do lazy where he's played inside with the throw by, okay? Now I want you to turn and run with him. You just forget your footwork. Notice the footwork. We're not doing that triple anymore. We're doing it actually lazy. That's why we call it lazy. Poor footwork. That means just take off, let him run with you, and then at 12 yards, do the throw by. All right, here we go. Three, four speed. Set, go. Turn, run, 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 run. Boom, get rid of him. Very good. Come on back. Let's do that full speed one time. Okay, lazy with a throw by. This is actually the one we use most often in our games because we see the hard inside press. All right, here we go. Full speed, Benny. Full speed. A little bit more inside. Okay, good. He's taken away his inside with leverage release that we talked about a minute ago. Now it's got to be outside and use that throw by at 12 yards. Full speed. Use great arm action here, Malcolm. Set, go. Good. The next phase of developing the complete receiver has to deal with blocking. And we take great pride here at Notre Dame, and our players do, with going down and trying to completely dominate a game as far as a one-on-one -on -one battle with the defensive back. There are four common errors uh, with, with missing a stop block. The first one is lack of effort. And that's just done, with, uh, you correct that by either not playing the receiver or, or making a big emphasis on being as good a receiver as you, uh, blockers as you possibly can be. The second one is being over aggressive. A typical block by an inside receiver takes about two to three seconds, where an outside receiver, it takes about four to five seconds before that block actually matters. So there's a lot of time out there where you need to control a good athlete, good athlete on good athlete. The next uh, common mistake is, is not staying square, where we, where we give a soft shoulder. Same thing a defensive back used on a release, where we're uh, opening the, the funnel for the uh, defensive back to come underneath and make the play. And the final one is not controlling the defender on contact time. And that means after that four to five second block, if you're not locked up and not controlling him, the guy can disengage and make the tackle for an eight yard gain. Okay, so once again, just the emphasis, lack of effort, and making sure the receiver, your head coach coordinators understand that that's a critical part of the game in the run game. The receiver's block is the difference between an 80-yard play and an 8-yard play. So we make a big deal. We give a whole uh, system of block points where guys uh, do a good job blocking downfield. They have to understand their block is the difference between a big play and a short play. Okay, we're going to teach a progression to you here right now. Malcolm's going to be five yards apart. This is something we teach and spend a lot of time in spring drill and in two-a-day practices. Okay, the first part of the progression is going to be the approach. Now, I'm going to Malcolm here, sprint and break down, a sit on his outside half of a man. I'll go through it with you now. All right, set, go. Okay, he's going to sit on his outside. Notice his feet are barely moving, feet barely moving, hands in a strike position, uh, flat back, and now you can stop your feet. A big part of this is keeping his head and shoulders back because the defensive back is going to try to catch and get anything he can to disengage and make a tackle. Okay, so we got a cushion. We want to keep that cushion as long as possible. That's one of our advantages, okay? Go on back. So that was the approach. Okay, the next card is going to be the approach plus strike and recoil. Okay, well now we're going to ask Malcolm to do the same exact thing, break down on him with his feet not going quite as fast, feet barely moving, hands in a strike position. On the second command, he's going to hit, hit on the rise, low to high, try to jar the defensive back and recreate a little bit of that cushion that he lost as the defensive back came close to him. All right, here we go. It's going to be strike and recoil. Okay, set, go. Okay, he's going to sit down and hit. Sit back down. Okay, good. All right, hustle back. Okay, the next part's going to be strike, recoil, and then on the next command, they're going to shuffle to Benny's left, Malcolm's right, three steps, shuffle back and forth. This is the next phase of a stock block where you're working downfield, and you have to keep your butt between the defender and the ball carrier, okay? And all we're trying to do is, as he, if I start losing him this way, I'm punching to control. 
and all I'm doing is punching. Instead of holding them, I'm punching them to get them back in the framework of my body. It also throws my button hole. As I lose them the other way, start the other way. Boom, boom, boom. I'm doing the same thing. I'm punching them to get them back in my framework and throwing my butt back in the hole. Okay, this is punch to control. Back and forth, we'll do it about three or four times. All right, set, go. Okay, approach and hit. Okay, sit back down and hit. Shuffle out. One, two, three. One, two, three. Notice him throwing his butt back in the hole. Keep going, keep going, and break. Okay, now the next part is going to be the last common mistake I said was not controlling the defender on contact time. And that means after four seconds, if this guy's still fighting you, that means one thing. That means that ball carrier is right behind you. We're going to ask our receiver to get his hands inside, grab a hold of him in any can, and tug him in close and drive him off the ball. Okay, so we're going to go through the whole progression once again, and the final phase is going to be lock on. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. We got approach, strike, recoil, punch to control, and lock on. All right, here we go. Set, go, approach. Stay right there, Benny. And hit. Okay, now we'll break down and go. Shuffle out. One, two, three. One, two, three. Keep going. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And lock on. Drive them out of there. Good. Oh. Okay, the final drill we're going to do today is something we call the mirror strike drill. And this is a drill that we've developed over the years that is the, actually the most uh, game-like situation you can put a receiver and defensive back in. We're going to put him in a five-yard shoot. And Malcolm, what he's going to do on my command, he's going to push off. And once again, like I said, the greatest uh, threat a receiver has running a route is the threat of going deep. The greatest advantage a receiver has in a stock block is the cushion. So everything we're going to talk about is the approach and then recreating cushion as much as you can. And then it's going to be a mirror strike drill, and that's just going to be the punch to control. And then after four seconds, I'm going to make the command lock on, and he's going to drive him out of there. Okay, and a couple critical coaching points are, as he's doing, I want to count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, and then I'll say lock on. That gives the receiver the, uh, what happens in the, the feeling of what happens in a game like situation where you have to hold that block for four seconds. It's not a two second block. You need to hold on to that. Then that clock's got to go off in your mind and in your head that after four seconds, you got to lock on and control the defender like we talked about earlier. Okay, Malcolm's going to get in the stance. Benny's going to be about three, four yard cushion. On my command, he's going to push off. We're going to focus on the defensive back's arms. As long as he's still backpedaling, we'll keep backpedaling. We like to make this block 30 yards down the field. Okay, when he breaks down, we break down. We want to maintain a three yard cushion. So Malcolm, we want him to drive off. We want you to backpedal hard. When I break it down, you break down. <clears throat> maintain a three yard cushion. The next command, I'll say set move. Then he's going to come up and he's going to make the collision, or it's going to be the uh, strike and recoil. Okay, from there, I'm going to say move again. Then it's a free for all back and forth for five yards. You're going to use the punch and control technique, and then at the end, I'll say lock on. Okay, this is first one's going to be about three four speed where you just feel it out, and the last one will do full speed. All right, here we go. Remember, the command's going to be set, go, you backpedal, and then I'll break it down. Set, go, backpedal, break down, and move. Bam, good. Now work back and forth, move. Work, work, work back and forth. Good. One hand punch, Malcolm. One hand punch. Good. All we're doing is watching his numbers and try to shiver and keep our butt in the hole. And lock on. Okay, good. Let's do one full speed now. Okay, this one's a free for all. Full speed. Full speed. This time I'll count out 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and 1,004. All right, here we go. This one's full speed and we'll finish up. All right, here we go. Set, move. And hit. Boom, work, work now, Malcolm, full speed, work, bend and work, punch, 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 and lock on, get him out of there. Okay, good. Just a quick review with you, we've gone through the four phases of developing a receiver. We've gone through footwork, we've gone through ball drills and ball security, we've gone through releases, and the final phase we just completed was the blocking progression. It's been my pleasure, thank you very much.